what up YouTube here's another video for you um, it's about development of an athlete in the past video the last video I did that was posted um, I talked about at least a part in there I talked about I'm focused on developing an athlete development is my biggest thing especially with young athletes and you can say older athletes as well and what I mean by older you're 20 years old you're still developing you know you're 25 you can say you can still learn some things all that is development I'm looking to develop young athletes at this time. These videos, like I mentioned, were a while ago, but I'm loving um, going through them and breaking them, breaking them down. But I wanna say this first, on the last video that I did, I would say in their thigh pop a lot, and I didn't say this in the last video, and I caught this as I rewatched the video. Um, Lauren Seagray is the person that I got that from. Um, great coach, uh, learned a lot of things. He has a lot of cool videos, or at least, um, informative videos on youtube so i recommend check them out all you can just type in his name and if you want to learn more about sprinting and the his philosophy on sprinting you know I, I say check it out but anyway this is an athlete senior year uh i met her her junior year but this is her senior year and i'm, I'm gonna go through a process of how we um develop during this during the season you know um we, like i mentioned before in my videos I believe Arizona has a very short season, um, a spring track. We did um, go to a couple indoor meets in Albuquerque um, her senior year. I believe she did. I'm not sure if she went to one or two, but either way, I got one of the races. And we're going to jump into that and break that down, um, at least from my perspective. And then the athlete can hear some of the things I was thinking and, and, and learn. All right. Here's the video in Albuquerque. It's the 60 meters. Um, it was, I can't remember what meet it was, but it was probably the second year they had this meet when we realized you could, you, you can't, we can drive what the six hour drive for us here in Southern Arizona. So we drove up to just get some early, early lessons, early understanding of how to compete. You notice she gets out the block. She is moving her arm. She's looking in my opinion, great. She's obviously frustrated because one of our other athletes are way ahead of her. But for me, I saw it's it's hard to see. Obviously, I had a bunch of athletes in that race and um, Mama Swift records everything. So it's easy for me to just to go back to our video camera. I mean, our our DSLR camera and just look at it and I can put it in slow mo there. And, it, and I usually don't get time to do it when we're at meets. But um, I remember watching. I, I kind of knew what the athlete that was up front was going to do um in her training we were working on other things and she was in a different process but i remember well the other athletes in the race they were young i think it was a sophomore and the other two were freshmen and these are my two seniors um i should say well they were seniors but anyway i was really focused on you know um what she did in this race i know that the video at least because we had a bunch of athletes right it jumps off screen but what i did notice that she did well in that race as she got down the track you know let's just say 30 meters in she was putting her foot down as best she could and as fast she could it just she just wasn't moving as fast as she wanted to so she's a decent starter i would i would say she gets she does well coming out the block so when a 60 meters and in any any athlete any coach knows it goes by so fast especially for athletes um so I was in the mindset of how we're going to how what am I going to get right now from this in January of this race? That's when this race was. And then how are we going to move forward through the season? So the biggest thing that I um, when I saw from that race is like, OK, how do I develop her and the athletes? Because it's going it benefits all of them. And let's just say the the two older athletes in the race, how do I develop them? And then everybody can just fall behind them. And that's pretty much how I run. Um, most of the things that I do, not all, because some athletes are completely different, you know, depending on what exercise we're doing. But some of the things I want to mention are pretty much what all my athletes do. And it's the ladder drill. I do ladder for all athletes. Like some people say you do ladder for for track athletes. Yes, I think it's amazing for coordination. A lot of times, as you say, you know, to pick a drill um, where you're just going down the ladder, every athlete um, goes down the ladder differently. As a coach, it allows me to see what the athlete is processing, how they're thinking, or how they're going to solve the next box or the next problem they have. So as they're stepping through the boxes, just again, imagine any drill, just going side to side or whatever, just whatever drill. 
in the beginning of going through the ladder, I don't focus on, you know, correcting them too much. It's just certain things that I'll say is, you know, I'll, I will go through the drill and then I want to see what kind of feedback they give me. And a lot of times you'll see athletes, or at least I see athletes, Mama Swift has become, <laughs> in essence, a second Coach Swift I um, when it comes to it. You see what sports they played before. Sometimes you see basketball players, you know, um, what biggest thing they point their toes as they go across, um, let's just say the ladder. You will see we had a gymnast and it was easy to see that she was a gymnast. You could see definitely baseball players and the way they position their bodies as they go through the ladder. And these are all good things. There's nothing bad about this stuff at all. But it also shows me certain things that certain weaknesses and certain strength. So the biggest thing that I do is, you know, I do. Yeah. Or Mama Swift does it better more than I do and better than I do. She, you know, yelling dorsiflexion as we're going through. And we also get on them about you know, moving their arms, just the coordination of opposite arm, opposite leg. And the latter has been tremendous in developing that for a lot of our athletes and young, old, in between. I just, I, I love the latter. Not the whole, you know, I don't get in the whole idea of, you know, you can get on YouTube and you see certain things fast. A lot of times we do the latter slow, just so I can see, you know, how the body's responding. And the biggest thing that I would say in the latter is just eyes up, you know, Eyes up after they developed and after they understood uh, what the drill is. I always say eyes up. Look at me. You know, you know where the box is so their body can understand a little or so they can grasp a little body awareness. That was what we were going to. We definitely went back to um, and we did. I want to say I can't remember. It was this was a while ago, but we did it at least twice a week. If I can remember correctly, um, um, as a season, we would do it as a warm up, you know, coordination ladder as a warm up and here's the thing about ladder and they knew it and i had i had bought a long ladder um we made it fun and they were having fun they enjoyed that they enjoyed the fact that you know it's cool it's fun i'm good at this drill whatever drill um, we've been working on and then they enjoyed the fact that other athletes who haven't been around helping them develop and say, this is how you do it. So it was tremendous for us, the latter and, and developing. And I knew more of that coordination, more that more of all that, I should say, was going to help this athlete. The next thing that I, I want to I want to point out that we focus on is what I don't know what it's actually called, but some people call it maybe call it different things, but it developed because my athletes changed a lot of my stuff anyway. But they developed and call it the um, Super Mario. And uh, Johnny has a video up of Super Mario. And that is huge um, in development. What the the biggest thing that I, you know, it, I I guess I'm going to I try not to say fuss. But, yeah, fuss about as a coach is, you know, get off the ground. So when their foot touches the ground, you know, and I try to obviously not on your toes. But when your foot touches the ground, I'm like get off, get off, get off. And I'm sure the athletes who are watching this here can hear me saying that, oh, get off the ground, get off, get off, because it's just important for their body awareness, the contact the ground, their Achilles, to strengthen their calves, quads, everything to be active. Now get off the ground. And a lot of times you'll see athletes, you know, landing wrong. And if that opposite arm and opposite leg, you know, if they're going same arm, same leg, then we start over and we slow it down and we walk through that process of how to get it right. In the weight room, I'm giving one of the things that we we would do is overhead squats now i want to be careful when i say that because i didn't focus on overhead squats in the sense of getting all the way down or what they would say ass to grass all that stuff i really focus on the overhead squats so their spine stays you know erect straight and as they're focusing on overhead squats like i said it's i'm talking about one athlete but this is what all my athletes did if they can go halfway down, you know, that is perfectly fine. I just want their back straight and them staying on their heels to where they can gain some strength instead of collapsing or the ball rocking forward. I always, I always tell them, keep the bar at your ears. And if they start to break, that's as far as you can go. And once they developed through that process, the the idea of, OK, this is where this is how far I can go. This is this is where I'm comfortable with or where Mama Swift or I say you're comfortable with. Then we say, OK, go lower or we add, you know, maybe a twist to it or to where, you know, hold it uh, different, different concepts. I don't want to like I said, I'm, I'm being careful because 
a lot of times it's done, especially over his squad. And it's always like, you know, it should be done this way, this way. I'm, I don't get into all that. I was developing my athletes and that's what I focused on. And then one more thing. And before we get into the next video, we would do snatch from the hang clean position to a split. And that was something, obviously, the more advanced athletes um, who've been with me and we were developing, um, they would they could understand that and understand body awareness through ladder and many other things that we 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 were doing box jumps box drops and that was huge some some athletes you know i i would have them even do like snatch onto a you know let's say a six inch box so they can grasp you know again another level of body awareness just with the bar all i everything i said was just with the bar i never and when it comes to everything i just said like i say in the past three or four minutes or whatever long i was talking all everything that I was doing was just with the bar. And as we started in, I should say this, you know, maybe we lift in season. We do two lifts a week for sprinters and um, out of season we can do. We could we just spend a lot more time in the weight room working on these type of things, not lifting heavy weight all the time. I do not think it's um, the best to lift heavy weight all the time and I also don't recommend lifting heavy weight all the time. But anyway, let's get into the next video. The next video is, like I said, the the first video was her in January, and now we're in, I believe this was late March or early April or mid-April. It doesn't really matter. The point is, it's before, I'm sorry, it's after the, the indoor video. This is a 200 meter race of that year. Um, she was developing well, and from my perspective, her acceleration was getting better, better. She was more confident with her run in her run. So I'm just enjoying the fact that she got out well as a coach. I'm coach. I'm looking, I'm standing more than likely at the top of the bleachers and I'm watching the fact of how our arms work around the curve. Did she hug the curve tight? You know, all those things. So as we watch her get, you know, mid, you kind of, I kind of see the fact that, you know, obviously fatigue is setting in and how does she handle f when fatigue sets in? All right. As fatigue is setting in, you know, I'm noticing and I put the video in slow-mo when Mama Swift downloaded it later when we got home or whatever. And I noticed that she was landing in front of her hip. She's tired. Her, I did like the fact that she stayed erect, stayed upright. Her shoulders were twisting a little side to side because she's fighting to get to the finish line like any athlete would in that situation. But as I see her collapsing, I should say, or, or like I said, striking it, landing in front of her hip, because you're not striking at that point. You're just, and that's just landing in front of your hip. And it only it makes sense. We're developing. You know, it, it's not that's not a bad thing. It's a thing that we're developing. It's like, OK, so what do we focus on now? So, again, Still in that same vein of everything I shared before, we just continue down that path of shortening up the 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 sets and well, maybe five sets, maybe creating three reps of different type of exercises just to work on a little bit of explosion and doing more uh, sprints. And what I mean by that is we're already sprinting anyway because we're sprinters. You know, let's say. Uh, we're at the 120 phase where we're just in our 120s um, as we get in April. That's usually what I focus on, 120s, 150s. Um, but I usually bring it down to even, you know, focus on 60s. Where are we at in our 60s? And flying, uh, ins and outs are huge, you know, especially just 30 meters. We would do ins and outs before practice as a warm up, you know, just warming up, doing with the ladder drill, have the workout. Let's just say we do six 200s and then i the cool down is the same process we go back to the ins and out and you say why do you do that because i want my sprinters to always feel fast you know they're they're let's just say i want the 200s at a specific time and it, it puts a little lactic in their legs i'll give them enough time in between reps but then after you know we're done the cool down it doesn't have to be fast it's getting you know super fast or like you know whatever fatigue level the athletes who stuck with me all year, you know, ins and outs and different stride things that we would do depending on the week and depending on how hard the workout was. I always wanted them to feel fast or at least go back to where they were excited and mentally fast, um, mentally excited about being fast. I said that right that time. So but saying that as I was going through that process and after this, after that race, 
I always go to a professional athlete to see and compare and see what I can work on as I'm cueing the athlete. So what the athlete I found for this particular athlete, I believe they're pretty much the same height. I'm not sure, but they pretty much have the same build is Shelly Ann Frazier Price. So as I focus on finding, you know, an athlete, you know, Shelly Ann Frazier Price obviously came to mind, greatest hundred meter sprinter ever. But what I noticed that she was doing that was, um, you know, obviously elite athlete just compared to a, uh, an amateur is she striking under a hip. She's getting not all the way full extension through her leg. I mean, through her lower leg or her lower limbs, but she's obviously striking the ground and staying in good posture position. I believe my athletes a little bit linked back compared to obviously uh, Shelly and Fraser Price, but that's not a big deal. That's something we're developing. So um, i I'm like, okay, we're in the right place, right time. Everything is working out. We're a month away, I believe, at that time from that race, um, that last race you saw. We're a month away from states. And because we're a month away from states, let's just stick with the plan. You don't, I don't want to offer anything crazy of trying to do some, something just crazy to, to change everything. And why I try to stick to something, because a lot of, a lot of people don't understand, a lot of coaches, people parents is probably the biggest thing don't understand how long it takes to make something permanent and how long it takes to develop so my thing is like okay let's stick to this um keep the athlete encouraged keep the athlete excited and you know backing off we're getting closer to the state so you know tapering as what some people say so we're tapering and that is what i'm like okay by the time we get to maybe let's say two weeks before states i'm going to see some things I, I, I trust that I'm going to see some development and I'm going to be very excited about. So as she's getting down the track on this race, yep, I think everything was working. I thought we were in a good um, good place before States. I believe, like I said, I could be wrong. States was two weeks before, um, two weeks after that race. But as I see her going down the track, she's she looks like she's striking so much better. She looks stronger. Obviously, the the race of the 200, but we're doing the 100. She, I just, from the 60 to that part right there and those short months that you have, or I had to develop, and those short months I had to develop that athlete, um, I thought that was great. And that was amazing where she was, posture, position, elbows back. Um, things are coming together and things are working. Again, developing the athlete for college. That was my goal. That was my plan. And I thought she did a, no, she did an amazing job. So as I always bring into my videos, there's always a conscious aspect to this. It's always a conscious thing that we all can pull out of anything that we do, but this is conscious athlete. So I bring in the conscious athlete part. What I really noticed, and there was a lot of backstory to this young athlete, um, at that time that, um, you know, she was going through and processing and learning. So in the sense of what we saw, it's like, wow, that's awesome. That's, that's amazing. You know, she developed, I mean, I'm assuming that if you're, if you're coach like me, you're excited about that, but here's the conscious part. She was doing amazing considering what she was going through and knowing the fact that, you know, where was her brain? How was her brain in that time that I'm with that athlete, you can't really, you don't really understand. I understand better now. I can say I'm more, I'm wiser than I was then. And I, and I definitely would coach different if I have the same type of athlete, same situation, but hindsight is 2020. <laughs> what I want to say is her confidence at that time was in college, meaning I need to get to a college. I need to go to college. If you're a coach, if you're a parent, you understand how Athlete, oh my God, I got to get to college, you know, and all those layers that go in there with that. You know, maybe I won't be anything if I don't go to college. Maybe, you know, I don't want to go to college to go to debt. You know, I need to get a scholarship. You know, all these layers were in there and she was processing all those layers. So as she's processing all those layers, her confidence was in college. And what I should have done more of and what anybody should do more of in this situation her confidence or building her confidence in the process, understanding she's developing, understanding that the confidence in college, yeah, you can go to any college and develop. And that's what I was thinking, but I wasn't really sharing that aspect of it. I wasn't saying like, hey, you're in the process. This is where you are. This is how we're going to develop and you continue to develop. 
the noise that the athlete is hearing is, you know, what do I do? How do I do this? All this why, how, and all this. That's why conscious athlete is born. And I got, I have a, um, I'm kind of speeding through, but the thing about this athlete that uh, is always interesting, I get the phone call, let's just say a random day. And she's like, hey, coach, can I, when I'm coming to Sierra Vista, you know, can I, can I stay with, uh, can I stay with you? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Like when you get here tomorrow, she'd be like, I'm 30 minutes away. So I love that about her. Obviously somewhat, you know, I'm like, why didn't you let me know? But that was just our relationship and our process. And what I've noticed about this wonderful young person is she never quits. All the things that we saw in the development over that short period of senior year, like I said, I met this athlete, um, her junior year, she's developed a tremendous amount of what we would call, you know, grit. It's kind of like why grit was started, you know, is greatness requires integrity. Oh, this way. Greatness. Oh, greatness requires integrity and tenacity. Y'all know what I'm saying. You know what I'm trying to do. The camera's different. Anyway, so as she's developing or as she developed this tremendous amount of grit and then her focus started to, you know, shift and her confidence with on life in life. I've watched her develop more and more as a wonderful young human being. She's in her mid twenties now. Um, she's, I would say, doing amazing. And these are the these are the things that I want to bring together is the fact that we are all in this process together and we're all here to help one another and help one another grow. You know, whether you like me or not, that's irrelevant to, to my process. And it honestly is irrelevant to yours. But what I really, again, honing in on and understanding is we are all great. And she has done some amazing, great things. So in her process of what she has now become, um, she made a choice. And I, I, I made a video on what I choose to become, um, a video that Jadia put up somewhere in this box here. And she chose something and she's doing amazing at it. And I'm very proud of, of the process she's been through because she continues to show grit on top of grit on top of grit. Um, and like she says, she's the original gritter. Um, anytime somebody says anything. So there is a lot of truth in that too, because she was originally, she was one of the first, to to be a part of grit. So I trust you enjoyed that video. I have a lot more videos to break down next week. I'm going to do a video on, um, the frequency of a sprinter and bringing in some conscious aspects, um, bringing in some of my athletes. So until next time, YouTube, peace. Hey, folks, uh, thank you for watching. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Oh, yeah, hit that bell, you know, so you can know more about um, Swift Sundays.